This may be hard to hear, but you may be hurting your dog without realizing it. Have you ever given your dog a piece of hot dog, maybe a little bit of cracker? Have you ever pet them on the head or even used a candle in your home? Because in this video, I'm going to share five of the most common ways that we as pet owners are hurting our dogs without even realizing it. Starting with how we walk our dogs on leash. This is one of the most underrated leash tips that have helped my dogs not pull as much on leash, but it also has improved their mental health health dramatically and that is by offering them sniff breaks or what some people call sniffaris and what that means is one of the ways that we harm or hurt our dogs is when we take them for walks we never ever give them the opportunity to sniff freely and safely of course just like you and i dogs can have bad days where they feel stressed they feel anxiety or they feel worries but unlike you and i they don't have the ability to escape or release that stress on their own without your help or without getting into trouble by chewing or gnawing on something. And what this looks like is during one of our daily structured walks, I'll give them at least five to maybe 15 minutes of sniffing time. And this is where I tell my dogs, go sniff, and I still have them on their leash. Sometimes I'll bring the long leash line, which all my favorite leash and products are linked in my description below. What that means to them is they can go and sniff freely and as long as they're not yanking me over and making me fall, they can lead the way. And for dogs, because their noses are so strong and powerful and the most interesting organ on their body, the act of sniffing can reduce stress, anxieties and worries and really help build confidence overall. Now the next way that many of us, and I've been guilty of this myself, are hurting our dogs without realizing it is by giving them table scraps. And I know you may be saying, wait, Rachel, on your channel and your TikTok and your Instagram, which I'm Rachel Fasaro everywhere, you're always talking about the power of adding real fresh foods to the bowl for our dogs, which my favorite foods and things are linked in the description below. And that still holds true, but there are absolutely some very common table scraps that dogs often get that can be extremely harmful. A couple common examples are high fat, highly processed, cooked at high temperature meats like hot dogs or deli meat. And these are commonly recommended to use as training treats because yes, they are high value. They're very tasty. But the reason that they're so tasty is because they're packed full of salt in excessive amounts, which are often too much for dogs, hi Bentley, or they're packed with nitrates, things that again, that are not healthy for dogs, or giving our dogs highly processed starchy foods as table scraps or snacks such as crackers, chips, cookies. These are things that seem super harmless and in very small quantities probably don't do a ton of harm. But here's the reality. Almost 60%, well over half of dogs are overweight and obese. And it is widely agreed upon in the pet health industry that excessive carbs, sugary carbs, starchy carbs can absolutely impact and promote weight gain in our pets. And instead, when I want to treat my dogs, I just love giving them whole, real, fresh foods that are biologically or species appropriate, which means foods that dogs were designed to digest. It is extremely common for candles, air freshener sprays, and even perfumes to contain VOCs or volatile organic compounds or chemicals. And the problem with these is these are shown to be skin irritants for dogs and cats, and honestly, even humans for that matter, as well as irritants to their nose and respiratory system. And remember, our dog's nose are up to a hundred times stronger than ours. So unlike you and I, where we can kind of become used to a scent over time, our dogs and cats don't have that same luxury. If I am going to use a candle, I choose one that is pet safe and I give my pets the easy access and ability to leave the room that the candle's burning in. Hey you, this is future me. I'm actually editing this video right now, but I have to jump in here because we just got a package. Look at this. Our bark box and super chewer came in the mail. Look at the theme this month. It is none other than Harry Potter. This is linked below. Big shout out to BarkBox and Super Chewer for supporting our mission to save all the damn dogs by sponsoring this part of the video. And these are monthly subscription toys based on your dog's specific chew need and size. And they're BarkBox, look at this. So it's Harry Potter this month. Each month the theme is different. And look at these awesome toys. Oh, this is so cool. Um, and I got the medium large size for my dogs. Finn wants that one. Look how cute this is. And then they also sent Hedwig. Look at how cool this is. And I love that it has 
so many different aspects to the toys. So their bark boxes, they're more traditional plush toys. It has the crinklies here. It has a squeaker, good boy. And then Finnegan loves chewing it. And I also got their super chewer, which I get every month. And these are the same theme, which again, the theme changes every month. We have Harry Potter, but these are more for the super chewers in your family. Um, awesome for teething puppies. And look at this. So we have the golden snitch. Oh, Finnegan's gonna love this, which is gonna make for a great tug toy, fetch toy. Oh, get it, get it, get it, get it. <laughs> Go get it. They also said the Hedwig Owl is a two in one. And that's what I love about these subscription boxes because you get extended playtime. So it has like a nice plush, really thick uh, outer covering on this. But if your dog is able to yank this off, which if they do, I just discard it. There's an additional durable natural rubber toy on the inside. So dogs that like to shred things, this gives them an outlet to do so. All right, and then they sent Harry's bogey wand. So this is pretty cool. It's a nice, natural, very durable rubber. Great for fetch, maybe some light tug. And then for dogs that love fetch, they sent this Remember Roll, which I think is great because it has these raised edges. The bounce will bounce erratically, which kind of keeps dogs engaged. It's a nice, durable rubber. And as most of you know, what I love to do when I get these boxes every month is I'll put their either, if you feed a kibble, you can put their kibble down in here or some of their favorite treats. Stack on top all of their toys and have your dog go sniff, dig, and forage for them, supervised of course, and this helps give them mental stimulation and enrichment. So it's really just a fun way to interact with my dogs every single month. There is a special offer for you. It's linked in my description below. Now this next way that we commonly hurt our dogs without realizing it is something that sometimes I even still forget and something I encountered with my neighbor the other day, and that is how and where we pet and show affection to our dog. Do not, I repeat, do not prefer to be pet on top of their head. This can actually be overbearing for them, especially if you're coming directly on. Just think about it yourself. How uncomfortable would it be if somebody comes up to you and starts doing this and rubbing all over your face? Even if your dog seems to enjoy it, a lot of times in many situations, our dogs are just appeasing us. They're just doing what they think that we want because dogs are that incredible. It's one reason I love them so much is they will allow you to do things to them even if it hurts them, even if it makes them uncomfortable. But because I know you wanna give the best to your dog and help your dog be as happy and comfortable as much as possible, I really encourage you to explore how you're petting and being affectionate with your dog. Another example, which was really hard for me to come to terms with, is most dogs really prefer not to be hugged and grabbed on. And they may allow us to do it, but especially with children and especially with people they don't know, many times if you watch their stress signals or their calming signals, which could be wide eye or commonly known as whale eyed, kind of having a tight jaw, licking their lips, yawning, turning their head away, just like Finn did. These little slight subtle cues are how your dog is communicating to you or to the person trying to hold on to them that they are uncomfortable. Now I have a question for you that's somewhat related. In a somewhat nervous or new or different environment, or maybe you have friends or family over that makes your dog a little bit more excited than normal, has your dog ever come up to you and nudged your hand or keep approaching you or nudging you and almost demanding for attention? One thing I learned is that when my dog is feeling a little bit nervous, uneasy, or maybe a little overstimulated, overexcited, again, maybe we have some visitors over at the house, maybe I'm having a really rough day and I'm crying, or I'm talking on the phone with my mom and my emotions are really up, I notice that Finnegan especially will come up to me and nudge me and push on me. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but what I noticed is I used to uh, encourage that behavior and pet him and say, oh, you're, you're trying to comfort me. You're being such a good boy. And the reason this could be harming our dogs is if every time I'm upset or every time they get nervous when the garbage truck driver comes by and they come up to me and I console them or coddle them or pet them, I'm actually telling them through my physical touch that yes, there should be something that you should be concerned about. You should be worried. And if I'm having an off day, I don't want him to feel like he has to do something about it. So to ease his concerns, I just give him a basic go to place cue, which how to do that is linked below. And then he can curl up and do his little collection of paws, as you can see here, and relax. So by giving direction, I'm giving them the freedom to feel at peace. Now this next one is something that I think is fairly common sense, but unfortunately I see it happening a lot, especially on TikTok for whatever reason. And that is how we punish our dogs. A lot of people are still using physical force, 
uh, negative reinforcement as well as yelling or fussing at our dogs. Here's what I want to remind you. Our dogs are sensitive, loving, amazing, incredible creatures. And by yelling at our dogs or physically punishing them, we're not telling them what they're doing is bad or wrong. Instead, they interpret that energy and they interpret that behavior of us screaming or being physical with them as reinforcement to continue that behavior. So not only can that harm your dog's personality, it can ruin their confidence and can make them fearful of you, um, it can actually encourage whatever it is you're yelling about. So if your dog is chewing on a piece of furniture and you come raging and, oh my gosh, Fido, how dare you do that? And you pop them on the nose or whatever, they don't take that, they don't interpret that as, oh, I shouldn't have chew on this furniture. Instead, they interpret that as, wow, there's a lot of energy at me as I'm chewing on this and I'm getting attention. So maybe I should chew on this again next time I'm bored so that I can get mom or dad's attention. For me, at least with my dogs, when they're doing something I don't want, um, the first step is to try to prevent that. So puppy proofing or managing the environment, uh, is really important. The second is redirection. So if they're chewing on something or barking at something that I don't want them to, instead of yelling or screaming, I simply redirect and then I re reward the desired behavior. Okay, now let's talk about dog food. Earlier we talked about over half, almost 60% of dogs are overweight and obese, which can reduce lifespan by two years. And one in three dogs will be diagnosed with cancer. And it is widely agreed upon and studied that diet has a big role in these things. So click the video right here and we'll talk more about the kinds of foods that I feed my dog. Or if you wanna learn more leash tips and leash hacks, click the video right here. And don't forget to click that subscribe button. And I hope you have a beautiful day, goodbye. <laughs>